Hey friends from near and far, my name is Sensei Stanley, the Sensei for the Okinawan Karate Dojo, and we welcome you to our version of an online Karate Dojo. Welcome back to see some of our short pro training tips. We hope you find value in them. Today's video is on the circle, on the circle block, the infamous circle block. In Japanese, the words are actually wa uke or mawa yuke. Many people think that uke means to block, but it actually means just the opposite. It means to receive. It means to receive the attack so that you can then do something with it appropriately instead of just blocking. So literally translated wa means circle. Mawa is another word for circle or hooking or rounding. So when you put those words together, it basically means to receive with a circle. And there's three basic components I want you all to get comfortable with. The first one is the parry, the parry, the first part of that block, the parry hand, okay? So with the parry hand, you're gonna have two different positions. You either will wind up with a two hand position in the front, two hands in the front when you are finished with your block, or you will have one hand in the front and one hand chambered as a weapon. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate that, okay? We won't go into too much details because this is just for those who practice Weichi and for those who might wanna practice this circle block, but it's a lifelong pursuit to understand the different components and to get better at them. So let's just say I was gonna do a right circle block, a right circle block. The first hand is the parry. So you take your hand from this position right here, which is called a bushkin kamai, and you bring it to your sanchin kamai, and then rotate the whole unit from fingertip all the way down to your elbow, right towards your center line, right towards your nose. So basically I'm turning my pinky towards my nose. Then when my circle is complete, I put that hand back in the exact same position, rotating from my wrist. Let me do that two more times. I bring that wrist up, and make my entire unit from fingertip to elbow straight, rotate it towards your pinky, rotate it back, bend my wrist back into position, and then we go right protecting my body again. Let me do that one more time. Here, rotate towards your center line, rotate back and put it there, okay? If you've done San Chin before, you've also seen that exact same movement with our San Chin strike where we take our hand from here, from this position, and we rotate it, we bring it across, and then we slide it back and we turn it into a nukite strike or a san chin strike. So from this position, we would make that arm straight, nukite style, getting ready for that rotation of the full unit right towards our center line and bring it back. That's the second thing that we would do or we could do with our parry hand. Here's the second thing, the second component that I really like about circle blocks. It is the joints. The fact that we have two basic joints. We have, oops, we have a pin dropping on the floor. We have A, hinges, and B, we have ball in socket, or ball and socket, depending on how you look at it. Let's talk about the two. Hinges, like your elbow, just bend. They bend. They don't do anything else, but they bend back and forth. Right where the two bones meet, they bend. A ball in socket is literally that. You have the end of your bone, and then it kind of comes together and looks like a ball, and it fits inside of a socket or a cave, if you will. And if you think about it, without any type of issue, that ball can rotate in a full circle. So for example, your elbow is a hinge, but your shoulder is a ball and socket and it can go in a complete circle in a lot of different ways. So if you wanna take some time and think about the different hinges and ball and sockets you have on your body, you can apply understanding of those joints to your karate and understand how to be a little bit more efficient in your movement, okay? Third thing before we get into this is the idea that you have four different areas through which your circle block will move. They're called quadrants. For those who might have taken Latin or understand that, quad 
could uh, eventually means four, okay? And I will draw what I mean. If you play video games, if you've ever uh, looked at a target or a scope, you know that there is a cross right here, and right here is the center, but you don't wanna forget the fact that you have these different quadrants that you have to move through when you are doing your circle. So when you're doing a circle block, if you think about your circle fitting right on top of that quadrant, I'm gonna make this about as easy as I can, as I can draw. Your circle block basically does that, okay? So your first thing would be to come down and then you go through this quadrant, this part of the space of your circle, then you come up and then you come over here and then you come over here. Now, if you've never seen something like that before, let's make it a little bit more realistic. I invited two friends. The first of my friends is Iron Man. So what you see here is I put a quadrant right over the part of his body that he wants to protect. He wants to protect his stomach, he wants to protect his chest, and he wants to protect his face. Literally speaking, he wants to protect right where his eyebrows are. That's a lot of Wu-Tang Clan secret right there for you, but that's the quadrant through which you're gonna travel, okay? So that makes it a little bit easier to see when I start showing you how it looks on my body, okay? So we're gonna leave Iron Man right there. So here is what your circle looks like. If I drop my left hand, my first move is to hinge, hinge straight down, just let my arm go straight, okay? I don't use my ball and socket to go that way first. I see a lot of people do this, and then they circle. The first move should be to go straight, and that way you're staying right where your body line is. Then you wanna rotate to get your blocking surface correct, and then you go across, if you imagine a quadrant there, you go across this part, this number one, right there on our, our, our design, and then you come across number two, and then up to the third quadrant, number three, and then back down across the fourth quadrant, okay? Let's talk about the value of the quadrants, if we can go back to this whiteboard here. This first movement here, when we hinge our arms straight down and we're going across this part of our body, that is maybe blocking a punch or an attack that could be to a lower area of your body like your stomach, okay? Getting right there to this, this axis point right here, your center line on your body, has in effect pushed that attack past your body, and then you are dislodging the person. You are making it easier to manipulate the actual weapon and the attacker when you're traveling through quadrant number two by lifting the attack up. Quadrant number three, again, helps you to bring that attack, that weapon, past your body line up top, and then number four brings the weapon and the attacker down, down. Let's talk about that one more time. I have hit with me another friend that you might recognize, Senpai Robert. He's one of our adult instructors here. So he is going to demonstrate just with his hand right here. So the first move, if he was punching me, why don't you come this way? If he was punching me and my hand is here and he punches low, my hand comes down and it travels through quadrant number one. And as soon as I get to my center line, you'll see that his punch goes right past my body. Goes right past my body. Quadrant number two takes his hand up takes his arm up, making it easier for me to move, manipulate. Number three, when I travel through the third quadrant, brings this fist past my center line and then past my body, just like that. Number four then brings it down so that I can do many things after that. I can grab or I can break his posture or twist his energy. If I stop right here and just show you what happens with number four and the intensity of number four, watch what happens to Senpai Robert's body and his attack. Just by going through quadrant four fast, his body is jerked down. So every specific quadrant has an application that you should continue to remember as you practice your circle block. Parents, if you're at home or if you have a partner at home, here's something that you can do with your partner. So you can have that arm straight out you, your parent can grab your arm, and then Senpai Robert's gonna do a circle, and by doing a circle, you can see what happens with the person's body. You can ensure that you have, in effect, possibly even been able to grab their wrist and, and manipulate their joint in a circle, certain way, okay? Or if you do it with the other hand, he does his circle, 
and it brings it right over. So it's always good when you have partnered ability to practice some of these, these techniques. All right, let me show you a circle block putting together the parry and the circle, okay? So I have, in this case, and it doesn't really matter in real life, you want their technique to work. I have my right foot in the front, I have my left hand as the parry, and I'm gonna do a right circle block. So the first one I'm gonna show you is this one, the two hands in front when you're finished, okay? So this hand again comes here, it comes across, my right hand comes down just like a hinge, and then it circles through quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, quadrant number four, and then I put that hand back and I finish with two hands in front. That's the kind of block that you wanna do if you're gonna do maybe let's just say a kick afterwards. You want two hands in front to protect your upper body while you are counterattacking with your kick. Let's try that again. Parry hand comes to a straight position here, rotates towards your center line. Your right hand just drops straight down like a hinge, circles through quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, and then back here. And then that hand comes out. I'm gonna do two of them fast now. Here we go. Itch, knee, good. Now I'm gonna do two of them a little bit slower. Itch, knee, good. And then two more fast. Itch, knee, good, perfect. All right, now one more thing about the circle block that makes it very important to remember is that you wanna make sure that your hands are in a good position. You don't want them to be weak, so you want them to be strong all the way through your wrist, and you wanna make sure that your blocking surface is correct. So when I come down, I rotate my arm this way, and I bring my arm across, okay? Now, the second and final way we demonstrate that circle block with the parry hand is by turning that parry hand into a weapon so that as soon as you're finished with your block, as soon as you're finished protecting yourself, you have the option to counterattack. Here's how it looks. Slow motion, one, got your parry hand twisted towards your center line. That circle block comes here, and instead of putting that hand back, I bring it just like this, and now it's ready for a San Chin strike, a fingertip strike, a fist, so many different weapons. Okay, let's practice that nice and slow. That left hand does this parry, right hand comes down to hinge, and instead of pulling it back, to a two-hand position, you pull it back for your chambered weapon. Let's do that again, nice and slow. Parry hand, circle, and it comes right back for your chambered weapon. Now let's turn it into a seiken, a fist. Itch, and now it's a fist, nice and tight and ready. Let's do that again. Knee, good. Let's do it again, nice and slow. Itch, circle. As soon as my circle is finished and past my center line here, about to move through quadrant number four, that's when this hand right here, your left hand, can start to become a weapon. So that as soon as you finish quadrant number four, you're ready to counterattack. Let's do that again nice and slow. Parry hand comes here, right hand hinges down, big circle, as soon as it gets to quadrant number four, you bring it back into a fist. Two more times nice and fast, and I appreciate you tuning in to make your circle block better. Itch, good, knee, perfect. So that's a circle block, a wauke, a mawayuke. So when we practice our san chins, you see us break that down into a nice several component piece to travel through so that we can focus on the details. And when we do other things like partnership drills and basic techniques and our katas, we're practicing them using a mawayuke very fast. And uh, that's where the secret sauce is made. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope to see you soon with better circle blocks. Thanks a lot.